Three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Creating a game for beginners can seem like a noble endeavor, a gateway of sorts into more advanced affairs. It's also one that is far easier said than done because you have to walk a proverbial tightrope. If you go too easy, you risk creating dependency without incentivizing expansion. If you go too hard, you'll scare them off. It's a careful balance that needs to be made. This, in addition to the fact that wider audiences are about as real as unicorns or honest politicians, makes the idea of making a game for beginners one fraught with dangers. This brings us to arguably the red-headed stepchild of Iron Crown's run with Tolkien's work, the Lord of the Rings Adventure Game, or Lore as it was referred to in the Merp 2nd Edition book. A more gamebook-like affair that's aimed to introduce new players into role-playing in Tolkien's world. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Lore's beginnings were in a box set that contained a guidelines book, the Dawn's Comes Early scenario, and a set of associated maps and stand-ups. This makes covering the lake out tricky because each book is fairly short. That said, it reminds me of a game book more than a role-playing game. This carries on with how the adventure has numbered segments in a choose-your-own-adventure style. It's serviceable, but there's really not a whole lot to talk about. Character creation is also brief. You merely take one of the character archetypes, distribute six points between the skills, and assign a modest two modifier to any skills that have no points. In the case of Muldan, we'll go with the Human Warrior template and apply the six points as follows. Two to Melee, one to Missile, one to General, and two to Perception, granting a minus two modifier to Subterfuge and Magical. Once again, I get a very gamebook vibe from this but perhaps Game Book Light would be more accurate. Even the game books I have covered and interviewed about had character creation that didn't go this simplistic. I understand the intent, but I think this is a case of doing it a little too well. Now rather than use the D100 of Merp, Lore uses a 2D6 system, but still rolling high. Unlike Merp, most rules rely less on degrees of success and instead a straight difficulty. The only thing that's truly chart-based is combat. In this case, the 2d6 is rolled and the difference between the attacker's offensive bonus and the defender's defensive bonus determines what column damage is calculated or if it's resolved as an unconscious or kill. Spellcasting is arguably more in line with the source material since the spell list is more limiting and casting spells causes strain on the caster. However, it doesn't have Merp's mechanics for risk when it comes to casting. Essentially, your power points are the same pool as your health as well. Lastly, I want to talk about advancement. Now, it's claimed that the experience system used, where you gain a certain number of experience and then you can pick a benefit from a list, is a level list affair to ease people in. But in practice, it's still a level-based system since it relies on experience thresholds for advancement instead of currency like other level list affairs. It might not have been the same numbering method, but you're still leveling up and choosing a benefit like you would normally. It's touted that lore is compatible with Merp. I think if it might have used a D100 system instead of 2D6, that might have been the case. And while the core mechanic is sound, I'm a little unconvinced in its ability to bring new players in. I tend to judge things within a specific context, typically on what a game is trying to do. Lore, in my opinion, tried to be an accessible version of an RPG, but ended up turning into a weird mix of gamebook and RPG in the process. This, along with the fact that it still does divorced mechanics to an extent, undermines its goal, in my opinion. I don't want to be too harsh on it, since it was killed off before it could reach its full potential, but I think that trying to be both accessible and compatible with Merp were two goals that do not mix. I think I understand now why it became the more overlooked of Ice's games, and as such, I have to give it a stamp of avoid. 
That said, there is a silver lining in a fan-made game called Middle-Earth Adventure Game. That one has some similarities to lore, but is far more flexible with character creation and mechanics, making a lot more solid of a game as a result. Next time, we move away from Iron Crown to shift over to the Cypher's run with the Lord of the Rings, when they integrated it into their CODA system.